it's the scandalous case of the handyman turned hitman, the wealthy straight-laced wife, and the kinky husband who wanted her dead. It's the American nightmare. Sex, lies, drama, betrayal, and death. Bob and Jane Bashera were the picture of happiness and wealth. The Bashera family lived in Gross Point Park. Gross Point Park is one of the uh, wealthiest enclaves in, uh, in Wayne County. That all came crashing down when Jane Bashera's body was found broken and stuffed in the back of her luxury SUV abandoned in an alley on Detroit's east side. Just a few miles from the swanky neighborhood where she lived with Bob. And it was just always a kind of an island of well-kept upscale culture and society. Bob, the son of an appellate judge, had lived here his whole life and owned a number of properties around town. Jane, a self-made marketing exec, had worked her way into high society and by most accounts had become the real breadwinner of the family. They were highly thought of, uh, an upscale couple, pillars of the community. But at least one of those pillars was crumbling behind closed doors. At some point, Bob developed an affinity for the BDSM community. He got introduced to a, a sexually alternative lifestyle. Bob became obsessed with drug-fueled parties and sex slaves. He even operated his own erotic dungeon. Master Bob secretly did it all. When Jane turned up dead, Bob publicly played the part of the grieving husband. This is an unconceivable tragedy. But the Gross Point police are not buying the tears naming Bob a person of interest, then hauling him in for questioning. Let me tell you, gentlemen, I have wrecked my brain. I have tried to come up with as much uh, speculation and thought and you know, what could have happened to her. Bob reportedly failed a lie detector test. Still, investigators needed hard evidence, and they were about to get it. A six foot four inch mountain of a man named Joseph Gentz walks into the police station and to the shock of everyone, confesses to the crime. But Joe, who is Bob's handyman, told our Andrea Isom this in a phone call from jail. Did you kill Jane? Well, yeah and no. Joe says Master Bob was also a master at manipulation and forced him to kill Jane while Bob watched. That was a case of domestic violence gone absolutely mad. It's a case with more turns than the doorknob to Bob's secret sex dungeon. People didn't just follow this case, it was an obsession. Now it's a he said, he said. Master Bob is cracking the whip from behind bars and talking exclusively to Crime Watch Daily in this jailhouse confessional. I'm a Christian and a pacifist and I don't believe in violence. But the handyman says he killed Jane at Bob's request for 8,000 bucks and a used Cadillac. What would you Times say to Joe Gentz right now, who's obviously fingering you, is putting him up to this? I have nothing to say to him. Prosecutors make a deal to reduce Joe's charge to second degree murder in exchange for his testimony at Bob's trial. But before Bob would stand trial for conspiring to murder his wife, he gets busted for ordering a hit on Hitman Joe. I foolishly and regrettably offered to pay Steve to bottle to find someone to kill Joseph Getz. Bob is sentenced to a minimum of six years behind bars. But that wasn't even close to the biggest surprise to come. This was a situation where a very prominent man in a community ultimately had his wife murdered. The Honorable Judge Vonda Evans has been sitting on the bench for 18 years. She thought she'd seen and heard it all until Bob Bashira appeared in her court on charges of conspiring to murder his wife. I can only imagine the heartbreak she felt to know that the man that took a vow to protect her would be the one that would destroy her. If you had to describe to people the character of Bob Bashira, how would you do it? Manipulative, cunning, dangerous. Prosecutors paraded out mistress after mistress. It would generally be a little spanking. Their theory, Bob wanted to get rid of prudish Jane so he could pursue his secret sex crazed lifestyle. And that's what captivated many people. The cheating, the salaciousness of the detail, 
an ultimate betrayal of a woman who loved her husband and cared for her children, Jane Bashira. Bob's own daughter even testified against her father. He was on pornographic websites because he had been experiencing erectile dysfunction and he wanted to know if the problem was with him or my mother. At one point in a pretrial hearing, Bob inadvertently acts as his own character witness, seductively licking his lips in full view of the bench. Do you think that throughout the trial, Bob Ashira tried to manipulate you? I believe that Bob's objective was to go free. And anyone was a pawn in his game, including me. Bob is ultimately found guilty of five counts, including conspiring to murder his wife. He's sentenced to life in prison without parole. Case closed, not even close. Immediately after his conviction, Bob petitions for a new trial, claiming he wasn't properly represented. It's a common maneuver. Keep fighting, my legal warriors. You say that? I did say that. Bob suddenly gets help from the last person anyone expected, the handyman, Joe Gens. This is garbage. Joe, who originally said Bob hired him to kill Jane, changes his story entirely, giving Judge Evans an affidavit saying Bob had nothing to do with Jane's murder. The affidavit Bob Bashir believed to me would be his gift of freedom. Did Bob hire you to do anything no. at all to Jane? No. no. In Crime Watch Daily's exclusive phone interview with Joe from jail, our Andrea Iasom asks him if he killed Jane on his own. Well, I'm going to tell you what. There was actually four people in the same place. That's it. You heard right. Joe now claims four people were involved in Jane's murder. Was Bob there? I'm not going to say that. Andrea tries her best, but still cannot get Joe to crack. Is that person locked up? I can't hear you. It's getting noisy in here. Is that person locked up? No. It's noisy over here. I don't know what's going on. Now, the bigger question, would Joe's new testimony help or hurt Bob's case for a new trial? Joe Gens' testimony was a Trojan horse. How are you today? Mar. With a much more frail-looking Bob Bashira sitting right behind him, Joe stands before Judge Evans. Before Joe Gintz could utter a single word, Judge Vonda Evans instructed him that if his second statement contradicted his first, he could spend the rest of his life behind bars. But when Joe gave his answer, the judge knew then that everyone inside that courtroom was about to hear the truth. Anyone who promised you, made you, forced you to say, take that stand, Joe Gintz. No. Nope. You will be subjecting yourself to being charged with conspiracy to commit homicide. Do you understand that? I understand that. He said, I have to tell the story. I have to tell the truth. On the stand, Joe once again stuns everyone. Under oath, he flips his story again and points the finger for Jane's murder right back at Bob. I went over to the move boxes. Next thing I know, he pulls a gun on me and says, shut her up. They were arguing still. And he says, do it now. So I broke her neck. Yes, i I be honest, I did do that. I often ask <clears throat> the witnesses in my courtroom to use words to paint a picture. Joe was Picasso. We he went through break. each yes. detail. His order to murder Jane, the ultimate killing of Jane, and disposal of Jane's body like common trash. After she was dead, he walks over, her top was open, he goes over to her and he says, I'm sorry, baby, I didn't mean it. After Joe changed his story so many times, did Judge Evans believe that Bob really did order the hit on his wife? What do you surmise from what you saw? Surprise. Betrayal. Hmm. Disappointment. And now, this case, with more twists than a roller coaster, is about to take another turn. It's the story that's not told, that people don't even have a clue about, and I'm sharing with you right now. Next, Master Bob's new spin on his murder-for-hire saga. So, you're saying you are the victim in this situation? 